Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to video number 9 in Make a Game, a cool series on making a video game in Unity. Today we are going to be taking a look at particles. They are so much fun to play around with. We are going to be adjusting settings and making uh, our coin emit awesome shiny particles and we are going to make everything look much more awesome. So as always I've opened up Unity and we are back in our make a game scene. And uh, what we can see here is we have the coin ready with this coin pickup script. And basically how you uh, would do this is we would want the coin when we pick it up. So when we roll into the coin, we want it to emit a bunch of particles. And you do this by first making a particle system and then telling this coin to create this particle system right before it uh, destroys itself. So first off, let's uh, take care of the awesome part, which is making the particles. And after that, we will uh, make the code, but it's really simple. It's only like two lines of code. So go to game object, create other and then particle system. And this is called the shuriken particle system. There's much debate on how to pronounce that. I'll say shuriken. I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but um, this is the new awesome particle system in Unity. So uh, what we are going to do first is we're going to take a look at the general settings. So we can just move this up a bit so we can see what's going on. And first off, let's adjust the duration. And the duration is basically how long it's going to emit particles before it stops emitting. And uh, you won't notice any change whenever I, I change this right now because it's set to loop. And that basically means that once the duration um, is uh, has run out, it will just loop and so there's no difference. But if I set this to, let's say, 1 and then turn off looping uh, and hit stop down here with the particle effect so we can hit simulate again, we can see it emitting for one second and then it stops. Uh, so basically we want to set this to something like 0 0.2. Let's just see how that looks. So we just get this single burst of particles and that's basically the effect we're going for. So, but just to play around with things, we're gonna set it to loop while we, um, while we set this up. So just set loop and hit similar, uh, simulate. Now pre-warm, we don't want that. That's if we want it not to start emitting particles whenever it spawns, but just want it to spawn with particles. Uh, that's not something we're going after. The start delay will just leave that at zero. The start lifetime, this is how long when uh, the particles are going to live after they are emitted. So basically if we set this to one, we can see that they live for one second. If we set it higher, we can see them going much higher. Uh, and basically let's just try this off at one and um, we'll see how it goes. We might do something like no, actually, let's try it off with, with one. I, I think that's going to be pretty great. And the start speed, I want this to be uh, maybe even more. So we can just adjust this to however we want. And I want them to be shooting out right in the beginning. And, uh, and that looks pretty fine. The start size uh, also looks okay. We can just leave that for now. The rotation, also leave that. The color, that's something we're going to change down here because we want the color to actually animate and not just be one single color. Uh, the gravity multiplier, this is if you want the particles to start falling. So we can bump this up, but, but that's not really something I'm going for. The inherent velocity, that's just something we're going to leave for now. Simulation space needs to be local. And um, it could be world 2, that doesn't matter for us right now. And the play on awake, we're just going to leave that on. That's important because the, we want our particles to play as soon as they spawn. Um, to, uh, if we set the simulation space here to world, um, maybe I can demonstrate this in the editor. I don't know if I can because I would like to. Yeah, okay. So if we just set the lifetime of these to something pretty long, uh, right now the simulation space is set to local, so whenever we move this, you can see we move all of the particles. But if we set this to world, it will only 
move the emitter so the particles um, that are up here won't get affected. Uh, so that's basically the difference there, but we don't need it to be anything other than local for this. Great, so let's just delve into some cool animation. Um, actually, right before that, let's take care of these two. So we can just uncollapse these. And all of these are, are awesome components inside the particle system where you can do different things. First off, the emission. Uh, we're going to bump up the rate to make it more, um, to make it emit even more particles. So here you can see we got a lot of particles going. And the shape, we're going to change this to a sphere so that they will emit out from a sphere. We could also, actually, we could make this the same uh, shape as the coin, but then we would need a mesh. So we're not going to play around with that. But basically, let's just bump down the ratio uh, or the radius a bit. And that looks just fine. And uh, random direction. No, we're just going to gonna leave it as is. And then we can go down to the velocity over lifetime. And if we just play around with this and bump it up on the x-axis, for example, we can see that the particles start floating uh, in the x-axis. And if we bump it down even more, they get affected. So basically that makes them... This is great for simulating wind. Uh, but it's not really something we want right now. Uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to use the limit velocity over lifetime. And uh, what we can do here is we can get that really awesome dampening effect. And we can change the speed of this just to how we want it. Uh, and the dampening effect. So if that's at zero, they won't get affected at all. I'm going to do something like 0 0.3 there. And the speed of 2, something like this. And the color over lifetime, and this is really cool, is we can go in here. And now instead of just choosing one single color, we can click this and we get the gradient editor. And this will allow us to completely customize its color over lifetime. Uh, so what we can do is we can say the start color should be pretty much the same as the coin. So we can use the color picker um, to make it this yellowish color. Something a little more orange, maybe like this. And now we can see that it, the, all the particles start out completely yellow. And then I want them to turn into something more, not red exactly, but another yellow color and not that saturated. So they get that white and glowy feel. And this looks pretty great actually. Uh, but you can go ahead and play around with it until you get something you're satisfied with. There. Uh, so this looks pretty awesome. And what we can also do is, instead of just changing the color, we can also change the transparency so that the particles will actually fade out. So that's up here. These are the alpha channels. So we're just going to select this, the one all the way to the right, and bump down the alpha to something like zero. So now we can see them slowly fading away. And actually, I want them to start fading away a little later. So what we can do is we can double click here to make a new alpha node. And then we can make this to a uh, maximum amount, which is 255. And then we can just drag this over so that they will first start fading away right before they, they die. Great. So uh, what we can also do is we can also adjust the size over lifetime. So if we hit this, we get this awesome curve. So if we click this and go down in the right hand corner, we can now adjust the size parameters. So if we want them to like slowly get uh, smaller, I want just a bit of a curve there so they don't stay exactly the same size. We could also make an inverse effect so they get bigger. That's something pretty cool for li something like steam machines. But we are just going to make it like this to make um, to give it the the uh, glowy effect and the size by speed we're going to leave that external forces all of this we're going to leave what we could do is we could make what's called a sub emitter and these are really cool because basically we can make uh, our particles whenever they die we can make them emit another particle system so you can imagine this goes pretty crazy sometimes uh, but basically what we could do just to try it out is we could add something under the, the uh, death here. We could hit the plus sign 
to create a new polygon system and now you can see it looks completely crazy and it's it looks a little bit like fireworks but that's something you can play around with if you want uh, to so you can see over here in the hierarchy it has created a sub emitter under the particle system which we can then change so we could set the duration of this to one the emission um, and the shape we could change these uh, for example the size is maybe a little bit crazy so we could bump that down the duration is still too much because it's looping so we can just make it go like this like just 0 0.1 and the looping and the particle amount here in the burst section we can change that to something like 5 instead and then set the lifetime to something like 1 and now it's much more manageable and then we can maybe make them red and now we got this crazy effect going but that was just to demonstrate the sub emitter so I'll just go ahead and delete that again and go back because that's that's too much simply so let's disable the sub emitter again and now if we go down under the renderer this is where we can make it look really great because right now these particles don't have the shiny feel they are simply a matte color but what we can do is we can change the default particle to something uh, that looks much more glowy. So if we make simply a new material, we can uh, have it. Uh, we can give it this additive blend mode. So if we go down to the project pane and hit and right click, then go under create and material, we can make this uh, glow particle. And we can change the shader of this. Oh, actually, let's just assign it to the particle system first. So we can go down here under the renderer and drag it in there. And now we can see it looks really dumb because this is not set up correctly. So we're going to go and change it from diffuse to the uh, effects, no, the particles, and then the additive. I think this is a really great effect. And then we can select the texture. You should see this default particle texture. And now we can see it looks like it's actually grow, uh, glowing. And this can change the color just a bit. You can adjust the tint if you think it's a, a bit too crazy there. I'm going to tint it just a bit to the red side to give it some cool tinting there. That looks pretty great. So a gray is red color and uh, I'm pretty satisfied with this result. Let's try and hit stop simulating and turn off looping to see if we have enough particles. And that's just a nice simple particle effect. And uh, I'm really, really glad with that. Maybe we can bump up the rate just a bit to get some more particles to something like 70. Yeah, that looks really awesome. And that feels really great. So let's just rename this to coin effect and drag it uh, down to the project pane to make a prefab and now we can delete it in the inspector uh, or the hierarchy I mean and uh, now we can select our coin go to the coin pickup script double click it to open it up in mano develop and we can see it opening up and you might notice that I'm using the new version of Unity which is Unity 4.3 it has some awesome 2D features we just I just published a tutorial on those so check it out definitely and uh, Mano develop here also looks much more polished which is great uh, but basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna instantiate that means spawn or uh, create a uh, the particle system and to do this, we need a variable. We need to know, uh, or we need to tell Unity what it needs to spawn. And so we make a new variable, var, and we're going to call this coin effect. And it's going to be of type transform. Uh, and this is just something you need to remember, not understand. Whenever we need to spawn something, we use the transform type. And now here where it says debug.log, add co coin counter here. Right beneath that we are going to type instantiate. And it's really important that you do this before destroying this object or it won't get instantiated. So instantiate and then open up uh, a parentheses. And now you can see it needs uh, a lot of input 
And this looks confusing, but it's really simple. Uh, actually, the first thing it's ne it needs uh, is just to know uh, what object it needs to spawn, uh, spawn, and that's our coin effect. And then we need to tell it where. So that's our transform dot position, just the position of this game object. And uh, with ro what rotation? And that's just the transform dot rotation. We can just have it give it the same as this object. And that's basically it. So close it up and parentheses and semicolon. And now when we play the game, uh, oh yeah, actually we have to assign it first. So now you can see on the script that it has the coin effect. So we can just drag in our prefab there and now hit play. And when we roll into the coin, we should see particles emitting and it feels much more natural now. Uh, one thing you could also do is you might notice the light um, just disappears. So you could attach a uh, light under the coin light uh, or I mean under the um, coin effect so that the light also fades slowly. But, but that's another thing. Uh, one thing we want to do though is if we have a lot of coins in our scene, they will just keep instantiating these uh, coin effects. And as you might notice, in our uh, hierarchy, uh, when we roll over the coin, we can see the coin effect clone here. And so the hierarchy will just get cluttered with these uh, coin effects, uh, which are not doing anything because they have already played. So um, what we can do is we can simply uh, tell it to destroy, uh, destroy this ob object after a certain amount of seconds. Uh, and to do this, we are just going to give it a name. So before the instantiate function, we'll just call this uh, effect. And we'll say equals instantiate. And we need to type variable also. So var effect equals instantiate. And what we can do now is we can say that not only shall it destroy the game object, but that before that, it should also destroy the effect. Like this. Uh, but we need to make it uh, make it um, we need to tell it that it uh, has to wait a few seconds so we just do comma and then maybe three seconds and close it up so let's see if this is working and hit play and now we can see we roll in the coin effect plays we can see it here and it should disappear in three two one it should disappear oh we get an error can destroy transform if you want to destroy game object please cut destroy and transform no. okay so what we can do is we can instead use destroy effects dot game object like this hopefully this will work we'll have to figure something out um let's see if it gets destroyed and there it was. So it gets destroyed after three seconds, just to clean everything up. So that was basically it for this tutorial. We can just round it up by making our coin into a prefab. I think we've deserved this. Now we can distribute it all over our scene and we can have it appear all kinds of places. The next thing we are going to be doing is maybe adding a coin counter or I have plenty of ideas. So there are more coming up and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.